And we are live. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your prediction for this fight down below. And if you are new, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect preview and prediction for Pedro Guevara and Carlos Quadras squaring off this Friday in Tashkent, Uzbekistan for the vacant WBC Interim Super Flyweight World Championship. This fight is taking place in Tashkent, Uzbekistan because the WBC annual convention is taking place this week and as part of their annual convention they wanted to host a showcase uh, event in collaboration with the Uzbek Boxing Federation and hence this uh, fight ending up on this card because the WBC are basically in control of the matchmaking here. So we end up seeing Guevara against Quadras and I've got mixed thoughts on this fight, to be honest. I think a couple of years ago, I would have been all for it and excited for it. But right now, and I'm going to get the negative out of the way early on, I'm not sure either of them are deserving of a world title shot at this stage. They're definitely both past their best at this stage. Guevara's best days were down at £108 and hasn't registered an impressive win in the best part of a decade now. It's been an awfully long time since he had a win that you can really write home about. Obviously, his performance against Ken Shiro was admirable, but he ended up losing that fight. So it's been a long time since he's had a win of any real note. And then Quadras, just the last couple of years, looks like a fighter that's at the end of his career. You know, the fight with Estrada would have taken a lot out of him, and he looked a little bit faded down the stretch. Obviously, he did really well early on and pushed Estrada, but started to falter down the stretch and I think that was age and the miles on the clock starting to show. Then against Bam Rodriguez, took a bit of a paste in and all honesty, got dropped and got beaten up for 12 rounds. I know he's rebounded with two wins since but didn't look good in those fights and had to move up to bantamweight and fight at a catchweight because he's struggling at £115. So you've got two guys that are well past their best and for me that just haven't really done enough to warrant fighting for an interim world title. Now, I understand it's circumstance that has led to this. It was supposed to be Pedro Guevara, who, to his credit, has been at Super Flyweight for a little while now, has been winning fights and WBC secondary titles through the rankings, and has got to a position where he's in a mandatory position or to fight for an interim belt. So I understand how he's ended up there. But Carlos Quadras is only here because Chocolatito didn't take the fight against Guevara because the money wasn't there for him and he feels he deserves a shot at Estrada right away or deserves to fight another champion. So Chocolatito turned down the Guevara fight and the WBC looked at their rankings, obviously acknowledged that Quadras is ranked very highly because they've given him some favouritism over the years. Obviously a former holder of one of their belts, a Mexican. And they looked at this event and looked at a possible fight for it and probably thought, you know what, we'll just speak to both camps because they're friendly with each other and see if they'd be willing to take each other on on this card. My issue is is that if Estrada, for whatever reason, vacates his WBC title or gets stripped, one of Pedro Guevara and Carlos Quadras is going to be elevated to full WBC champion in 2023 or 2024. That just feels bonkers to me. Even failing that and Estrada keeps hold of the belt and is made to fight the winner of this fight, we're going to see Estrada against Guevara or Quadras in the year 2024 and I just don't really want to see that at this stage of their careers for any of their careers so I don't love this fight considering what it means for the division and what it means for the WBC champion Estrada I don't particularly like that element of it they're also both past their best so for all of those reasons I don't love the fight another reason I don't love the fight and I mentioned that this fight got made because both camps spoke to each other they're very friendly. They've been in the same camps together. They were both world champions at the same time. They were pictured together, both holding their WBC titles. Uh, they've sparred together. They've worked together. They've spent time together outside of the ring. They've been at the annual conventions together. They've been flag bearers for the WBC and for Mexico. So there's a lot of familiarity here. And I think the fact that both camps will have spoken in the negotiations for this and sort of said, should we just should we just have it out and both get a payday on a showcase event and it's an opportunity to get towards a world title. We've seen Quadras have to dig really deep and we've seen uh, Guevara on a way soil over in Japan dig deep when he needs to as well. Is he going to do that and is Quadras going to do that in this fight against his mate? I'm not so sure, especially in an environment like Uzbekistan where the crowd isn't going to be particularly lively. It's going to be a showcase event for Uzbek fighters to show their skills. So I'm just not particularly sure we're going to get the best version of them or either of them are going to even attempt to give the best version of themselves. So that's all the negatives to, to do with the fight. And I think there is more negatives than positives. The positives are Guevara during his heyday at £108 was a legit world champion and a world-class fighter and a really, really good Mexican world champion. 
Carlos Quadras during his heyday, again, incredible fighter. Both of these guys have fought legends and future legends of the sport. Both of them have had fantastic careers. So they're both really good fighters. They're both incredibly experienced, two Mexican veterans. Between them, they've had nearly 100, amateur, uh, 100 professional fights between them, with Quadras having an extensive amateur career as well. So between them, there's a lot of experience there. They're both veterans, and they both know their way around the ring and have come across every single style. So for those reasons, I think there's a reason to look forward to it. But I just think the negatives here outweigh the positives. But we'll look at the fight nonetheless, talk about each fighter and their careers. It's a good time to reflect on each of their careers as they come towards the end. And then ultimately, I'll give my prediction. At the time of recording this, the betting lines haven't dropped. And I'm really intrigued to see what the bookies make of this. Because I think they'll favour Quadras. But I think Guevara should be the favourite heading into it. Because I think he's a little bit fresher. We'll concentrate on Pedro Guevara first in his career. He had an incredible career down at light flyweight. Even in fights that he lost, he gave some legitimate world-class fighters a lot of trouble. Uh, his first world title attempt for the IBF belt at £108 against John Rao Casemiro, a name that we all recognise and although not many fans like nowadays, has gone on to have a great career himself. That fight was incredibly close and although Guevara came up just short, if he hadn't been knocked down in the opening round he would have got a draw that night because one judge gave it to him, one judge gave it to Casemiro and the third judge had it 114-113 for Casemiro. If he doesn't suffer the knockdown in the opening round, Guevara, that ends up 114-114 he gets a split draw out of it. Nonetheless, he re rebuilt and a couple years later got to go back to Japan and took on... Uh, Akira Yagashi for the WBC title and was brilliant in that fight stopping Yagashi inside seven rounds brilliant performance to become WBC world champion had a nice couple of defenses Gannigan Lopez being one of them which is a fantastic win and then went back to Japan against Yu Kimura and ended up losing his belt again in a really close fight I actually remember watching that fight because Ian John Lewis refereed it one of the most random things but yeah Ian John Lewis over in Japan refereed that fight and again a split decision really close fight one judge had him winning it quite comfortably the other two judges narrowly gave it to Kimura so it was a really close fight and again Kimura is a very good fighter so there's no shame in losing to him again went to back to the drawing board rebuilt with a couple of victories and then got another opportunity this time against Kenshiro Taraji who was the, then the WBC champion and Kenshiro at that stage was a world-class fighter one of the best in the sport but wasn't quite the elite talent he is now he was a little bit greener back then but still world-class nonetheless and again <laughs> Guevara just lived up to his reputation and made it incredibly tough for the green Ken Shiro at that stage. And it was a very close fight once again. I think Ken Shiro won it, but nonetheless, it was a really valiant effort from Guevara and he made it very tough for Ken Shiro and one of the toughest fights of his career up until that stage. So he's fought some legends in the likes of Casemiro and Ken Shiro and given them really good fights. He's beaten good fighters in Igashi to win world titles, but all of that was at £108. After that Ken Shiro fight, he decided to come up to 115, and he's kind of floated in terms of his weight. Sometimes he's been a little bit under 115, a little bit over 115, but Super Flyweight is where he's been ranked and moved up the rankings and won some of the regional belts with the WBC. But there's just been no real names of note. There's been some good wins in there. Mexican uh, club-level shows, again, I mentioned all the time, you get matched incredibly tough against lesser-known names that are very experienced and hard punchers. And he's come through those fights relatively unharmed. He's had some close ones in there. But nonetheless, there's not been a lot to write home about since that effort against Ken Shiro where he ultimately lost. So he's had a good career, Guevara, but all of his work was done at £108, the best work of his career. Carlos Quadras is a certified, fully-fledged super flyweight that's had a great career at super flyweight. He's fought the likes of Chocolatito, the likes of Rung Versailles, beat Rung Versailles, has fought Estrada and had some great fights with Estrada. The first one, if he doesn't get knocked down, gets a little bit more out of that fight and doesn't lose. In the rematch, he gave him all he could handle again, and if he wasn't quite as washed up, as he is nowadays, would have heard the final bell and the scorecards would have been interesting. So, you know, he's had some great performances in his career quadras and out of the ferocious four is probably the least regarded of the four in Estrada, Chocolatito and Rung Versailles, but is kind of known for always giving you the best fight and always giving you the toughest fight because he always brings it. I think his advantage in this fight, he's had a greater career in my opinion than Guevara, but his main advantage in this fight is that he's a career super flyweight that's gone up to bantamweight and at this stage is struggling to make super flyweight, whereas Guevara is a career 108 pounder and is more comfortable at £115, which may serve him well in his mid-30s coming into this fight. 
Uh, we've seen Quadras in his most recent fight had to fight a bantamweight, and the fight before that was at a catchweight. So he does struggle to make 115 at this stage, but he's the bigger physical presence in this fight. Sort of height-wise, they're similar. I think Guevara actually has a reach advantage, a slight reach advantage, but just in terms of when you look at them, Quadras is much more thick-set and stronger and the more able to bully his opponents. So at their peaks, Quadras was a better fighter than Guevara and a bigger fighter than Guevara. So I think in their primes, 115 pounds, I definitely favour Quadras to beat Guevara. But at this stage... Quadras looked washed to me in the Estrada fight and in the Bam Rodriguez fight. And although in the Estrada fight he gave him a ton of problems, I think that was more down to Estrada not being switched on enough and him not starting well enough and him having one of his typical slow starts. And once he felt his way into it, he was too much for him. In the two fights since those two defeats to Estrada and Bam, he hasn't looked particularly good. One of them went to a decision where I thought he looked absolutely dreadful. And even the stoppage win at Bantamweight, again, looks slow, sluggish and heavy. I just don't think he's a particularly good version of himself right now. Guevara, for me, is a lot fresher at this stage. And his ability to be able to box off the back foot and be awkward and use his feet and box from range with that superior reach, I think might give this version of Quadras some real problems. So in terms of my prediction, I think the favourite is Quadras. But I think Guevara's going to win the fight personally. I don't know how the Uzbek environment and their familiarity with one another and all of those factors are going to play into the fight. I think it means that there is just such a variety of outcomes. But I think Guevara's just fresher and I think has a style that will last a little bit longer in the sport than Quadras is. I don't see a stoppage here. I think both of them are tough enough and durable enough to go the distance. But I think Guevara might just have a little bit more skill at this stage and is a little bit fresher and able to deliver a performance at world level a little bit more so than Quadras. So I'm leaning towards Guevara winning the fight. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. I'm going to have more predictions for this card coming out over the next couple of days. And Sultanov versus uh, Feigenberts is a fight that I really want to talk about. So... Stay tuned, loads of predictions come in for the shows in the UK as well, loads of previews and betting tips over on my Patreon as well, there's a link in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.